This week on the Peas, Gerald is still gone. It feels like he's been gone for so long. He may as well be on a wagon train out west. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Two Peas on a Podcast, covering the latest and sometimes greatest movies out there in the universe. Dad's gone. Uh, Dad caught us having the party last week, so he snuck out to the to the garage and he was, you know, tied to the water heater or whatever he was doing. Uh, Dad, Gerald, we love you. We love you so much. But uh, Gerald, not here again this week, so I had to reach out there into the community and say, who wants to come on the show and review a movie that literally no one but the two of us saw. <laughs> I found, <clears throat> let me just, uh, old man, Brad, Brad Hargis, one of my oldest and dearest. I love you, brother. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. That was, that was, that was a good intro. I should clip that and just make it my intro to my show from why is it forward. not? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know I've already I know I've already done that before. That should already that should be it should just be me, but then like loop it over itself so it's like oh and then so like a second like the later echo? it just comes in with like oh 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 <laughs> Yeah, Nobody's... we decided to talk a, a movie that I think maybe five people in the world have seen. I don't know. I don't so, know I, I really the, the real key is if we can get them to tune into this podcast and tune in <laughs> like all time high for demographics for listenership. Like if we can pull five listeners, Brad, who he'd be doing pretty be, good. He, it's, it's Gerald would be amazing. very jealous. He'd be like, how'd you do it? I was like, Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner will always do it. <laughs> the power of the cause we are covering today. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, of course, horizon an American saga chapter one, Kevin Costner rides a horse is what I titled the room here in Streamyard, which <laughs> is is part of it we'll get into it i think there's yeah. a lot to probably discuss about this movie i since this was your pick too okay so before we even we're not before we get into early score reveals or or one big question any of that stuff i gotta why this movie that's my one big question to you we're not even there yet but why this movie <laughs> <laughs> well this was one that i actually did want to see in the theater i didn't it kind of came and went so fast I didn't get a chance to, and I've always had this soft spot for a good Western. So I was like, you know what? It's on, it's on max now. Let's, let's do this one. Let's watch it. I've been wanting to see it. Yeah. I it think was between that to... and Borderlands. So, oh, God, man. <laughs> Woo! I mean, it just talking to Stu from Stu World Order, right? You know, Stu, you love Stu. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, talking to him about the top five movies before we were born talking about westerns back then so i kind of thought about that a little bit when you mentioned this and thinking like yeah let's see i mean this is a genre that i think costner is known to have a lot of oh, yeah. fondness for and everything like that and he shot a lot of stuff especially back in like the 80s and 90s that was all modern day western type stuff so it's interesting to see him kind of go back to this wheelhouse after so long I think it's kind of been his most popular, I guess you might be able to, aside from like feel the dreams, things like that, but like dances with wolves, even open range Yellowstone has been huge. So he's like, you know what? Let's I'm going to fund. I'm going to mostly fund one. I want to do four parts, four chapters to this man alive. So yeah, we've got a lot to talk about <laughs> with this movie. We've got a lot just kind of in general going on. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. And Dad, we miss you. I put the cowboy hat on him this week. For those of you in the video audience, uh, please enjoy our beautiful, beautiful a, cowboy a... Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> and the, th the, the, the face hugger on M. Night Shyamalan back here, just don't look at it directly, Brad. It stares into your soul. It kind of does. It looks like it has <laughs> eyes on it looking at me. It well, it does because it's it's a mask. Like I found a mask, and then I I, I just put it over <laughs> Mem Night Shyamalan's face. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Oh well, every single week on the show, or most of the weeks on the show, before we get into the review proper, we throw it out there on the social media and try to find out what the fans have to say, Brad, in a segment that we call "One Big Question." You could ask yourself a question. I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? 
Speaking of uh, westerns, I mean Clint Eastwood in there inside of the question all time. Not a whole. So, and here's what I thought: like I posted this out there on the P social media and in the Discord stuff like that. We did not get our normal amount of responses, and I assumed again it was because. After Nobody you and I watched film? this movie, it would only be you and I that saw this movie, apparently. <laughs> so, Yaney, Yaney didn't ask a question. Well, he did, but then he said the cinematography was worthy of the big screen, but the story is worthy of an epic miniseries a la Lonesome Dove. Uh, well, I guess we could talk about that when we get into the when we get into the movie proper. I have some Lonesome Dove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> His question was, is there a greater disconnect between many actors today playing in Westerns and actors from last century for one reason or another? I'm not sure what he means by that. Is there a greater disconnect between many actors today playing in Westerns? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, Westerns, you don't get many Westerns these days in general. When's the last good Western, you think? The last good one. man. Not the Magnificent Seven one that came out a few years back. That was that was pretty solid. Come on, Nick. Get out. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh my god. Bef- it's been a while. It it like Yeah, I can't I can't even uh I can't think of when the last like solid western was. Or I just even westerns this. in general. There's really not been many. Yeah. I talked about this with Stu when Stu was on the show and we did that top five movies from before we were born. It's like the pacing of a Western, I feel like, is something by that's gone the way of the dinosaur a little bit. Film audiences nowadays want fast paced. They want yes. action packed. And a Western is very much the antithesis of that. A Western is very slow, very deliberate, very plodding, very slow, mm-hmm. slow burn. So not a lot happens for like a good portion of a Western. There's just a lot of really great shots of random countryside and <laughs> steep cliffs and Aspen mountains. trees. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's sort of like that. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll get into that. I, yeah. Yaney, I don't know what you mean by, is there a greater disconnect between many actors today playing in Westerns and actors from last century for, I don't know what that means. Uh, so I don't know how to answer your one big question other than to say, there's just not, there's not that many opportunities around for it. I think audiences have moved on from them. I yeah. think, I think that's probably why this didn't do real well either, because because you think who's the for this type of movie Western. is yeah. is is an older audience. They're old. They don't really want to go out to a movie theater and spend the money for a movie ticket and spend the time to be bombarded by thirty minutes of travel. Although I'm going to say this, this movie, I did not. I think I saw a trailer for this. Like, think about all the movies that you've seen way too many trailers for when you've gone to the movies this year alone. Like some of the like number of trailers, like this was it Speak No Evil or whatever oh, the James McAvoy was one was front of literally, everything. literally everything. I don't think I ever saw a trailer for this except for maybe one time. I very rarely ever saw the trailer for this. What about you? I saw it, I think once, maybe twice. And it, it, I mean, at that point, I was like, ooh, this looks like it could be good. Let's, yeah, let's see. And it, it just came and went. It was like, oh, it's in the theater for a week, and now it's gone. Yeah. And Costner's got the pedigree to, you know, I mean, granted, again, it's been a long time since he since he did one of these, but I don't know. I just find it really, really odd because I didn't really see or hear anything about this. Yeah, its marketing its wasn't – I don't think they put a lot of marketing money, and I think because he funded a big chunk of it and he had to find investors, I, I just don't think the – the cash was there to to really market it <laughs> and, and they tried they were like all right we're gonna get the first one and a month later you're gonna get the second one and then they're like oh crap nobody's going to see this first one we're gonna pull the second one you'll see it eventually <laughs> yeah i mean oh wait that's... we're making two more <laughs> that's the that's the tough thing it's like i don't really think i saw a whole lot of this at all unfortunately which is which is sad because I, I don't I don't know it was just not 
anything that I was very conscious of when it came mm-hmm. out. I was like you when I did see the when I did see the trailer for it. I was like, okay, I like Costner. I like westerns. Yeah, I like that kind of movie. Like the three hour runtime doesn't scare me. Like Gerald's not here to complain about the runtime of this movie, <laughs> thankfully. So we don't have to look at it from that perspective. It's just, yeah, I I really don't remember. Grant, I don't watch a lot of television anyway, but I don't remember seeing like, anything promoting this really at all which there wasn't much i mean if, even I if remember. costner didn't have the money to put trailers in theaters like put him on a bus with his face on the side of it like driving around the country stopping in random towns to be like hey i'm in a western go watch it or or they weren't there weren't uh many advertisements on tubi for this i, I I'll, I'll tell you that oh is that what it was that yeah. what it was no t- they, they no needed t- to throw it in there a little more Brad likes Tubi, guys. I'm surprised. <laughs> it's 15 minutes into the recording, and that's the first time he said Tubi this whole time. I'm actually, I'm actually shocked. <laughs> Holding it in, I'm trying to hold it in a little bit. Oh. Hold it down. Uh, let's hold it down before before the Native Americans attack you, there, Brad. Every week, so we're gonna get into talking about the movie itself, get into our thoughts. But before we do, we like to do a little something. We let you know what we thought of the movie in advance in a little something called the early score reveal. Damn it, this always happens. I think I'm going to score and then I never score. It's not fair. It's not fair, Brad. It's not fair. It's not fair that there are 18 chapters of this apparently planned. (laughs) (laughs) And who knows if we're ever going to get them. He's going to keep trying to make them until he dies. Good lord. So Old all right, man Brad. Costner is gonna be like, I'm gonna finish this saga. <laughs> all right. So uh we're gonna talk about the film non-spoiler first, but before we do, we're gonna go ahead and reveal our scores out of ten. Brad, whenever you're ready, count us in and let's show the audience. All right, you ready? Of Horizon and American Saga Part Two, Electric Boogaloo, Chapter, chapter one. One. All right. In three, two, one. Ooh, okay, okay. A seven from Brad, a five from me. So that's, Gerald, that's a 12 divided by two. That's a six for the peas, buddy. (laughs) Six for the peas. I know math math can be hard sometimes. You came out of this with a lot more, uh, well, a little bit more of a positive vibe than I did. Talk to me about what you liked about this movie then. I Non-spoilers. Don't you dare, (laughs) Non-spoilers. I mean, I like a good Western, and this had all the elements that really just kind of drew me in. It had the landscapes. It had, it, I mean, there are a lot of story threads throughout this. That it, a whole lot of story threads throughout this that at first <sighs> I was like, wait a second, where are we again? Hold on. But as it honestly, as it kind of went on, and we'll kind of get into it a little more. I found myself just like just hooked in, just like I want to keep watching. And when we got to, you know, our finale of three hours, this three hour runtime just went by quickly for me. I did not feel three hours at all. And when it was over, I was like, oh, I want more. I want yeah. more. I in, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I would actually agree about the runtime. I think even for a three hour film, I think and, and, and this will get into some of the things that I was a little bit less about as well for the film Mm -hmm. but i think that there's so much going on in the film that it's never boring Uh, that's probably it is to its credit but also it's to its detriment the only reason and i I very sincerely mean this the only reason i'm not passing this movie is because i feel like i didn't watch a whole movie i feel like i watched three hours of setup for all the stuff that's going to come later yeah this isn't a whole movie like unto itself and like if you got to review just this movie just as it is like in and of itself like it just doesn't work as a film there are characters that disappear from this thing and you don't see them for two hours and then you got to be like wait who's that who what huh what like yeah. i mean ha oh, man i mean and and no story plot finishes it's all like it's all your characters because we know you were supposed to it's supposed to continue yeah 
So, all right, well, let's go ahead. We're going to take a break here, Bran, and Dan's going to come in with a little Patreon promo like he always does. And then when we come back, we're going to tear that spoiler wall down. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty. We're going to hit that dusty trail, baby, and we're going to talk about everything about Horizon and American Saga. Chapter 1, don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so, so much for tuning in to another episode of The Peas. Dad, we miss you. Dad, that hat looks great on him, though, doesn't it? It does. It does. I could have put like, Costner in here somewhere, but... It's almost like a Boy Scout Gerald. <laughs> it's like a he Boy just... Scout troop leader or something. <laughs> yeah, he needs, like, a, a brown shirt on. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, audio audience, go check out the episode on YouTube. I, I have the running gag where I'm just constantly adding things for every movie we watch to this background with, with Tweener Gerald in it, and I just put the cowboy hat on him, Castner's cowboy hat. I, I, I really, really love it. So uh, Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter 1. We've got Brad here from old man Brad. He loves Tubi, guys. Brad... Spoilers are spoiler wall is down now. Spoiler wall is down now. So I mean, we've got so much. I there's a lot of stories in this. Where do you even start? Where I don't do you want even to say start. There isn't a lot of story. There's a lot of stories. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> wh- all... whatever you want to start with, I guess, with this movie, like looking into all of its different aspects. Like I said, I don't even know where to start, dude. And it's all about the horizon flyer everybody gets the flyer and they they want to go to this horizon place wherever it is i don't you don't even know where it is really i don't think it ever really sets up they say in the very beginning i think they said the san pedro valley at the very beginning because that's where they're doing the survey that starts the like the very beginning of the movie when there's like surveyors out there but then they get killed by the native americans yeah by the san pedro valley by the creek and they make the one comment that the next people that come in, there's graves on one side. And they're like, what made you think that it would be okay? Because we are on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. That, how'd that work out for you? It worked out pretty well, didn't it? You got a whole bunch of Native Americans attack you and your settlement that you had going on. That was quite the scene, too. You mean the 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 attack like the yeah the big attack on there like the bigger settlement that was there. That's the great thing too is like well okay so the film starts off with a couple like random disconnected scenes. First there's surveyors out there, yeah. then someone else shows up out there like a few years later during the, this is during the Civil War. This most of the happen most of the action that we see happens in 1863. So you have someone show up out there and is like okay, well, we're going to build this town here. And then there's a couple other disconnected scenes. Like you see, what's the, what's the, her the, name? <laughs> like the priest, is he a priest? I guess the, the guy that shows up. I think he's a priest. And you only, he, he's one of the characters that just kind of like disappears. The cast is so big in this movie. Oh, like it, I'm struggling huge. to figure out you... which character. So what was her name? Was it? What what's her name? The woman who kills the dude in Montana. I'm sorry, guys. I can't even remember who all these characters are. Oh yes, uh, Gina Malone's character. Okay, so okay, okay, so Ellen. I guess it says on yes. IMDb. Yes, she and shot the guy. She shoots she a random the... dude in Montana and then takes off with his kid. But this begins a uh, this begins a problem that this film I think has in space, and that's why that's my rating is lower of it. I don't, how do I want to phrase this even, Brad? (laughs) Because I don't dislike any particular performance in this movie. I don't dislike any particular, like it's shot beautifully. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's really like, it. they shoot the hell out of of, of this thing. It really looks, feels, the pace is very, very Western-like. Even though it does Mm -hmm. move at a good clip, you never feel bored. But also, I, I, I'm sorry I'm struggling to remember character names, but there's so many characters that show up in this. Literally, her scene, she shows up, she shoots a dude, on a, he's on a couch in a cabin in Montana. She shoots him and takes off with a kid, and you don't see her for like an hour yes. of screen time. And you don't even ever learn her name. 
in that scene. And then when when he, she does come back, because Kevin Costner doesn't show up for an hour into this film. Yeah, that's true. And when he show rolls in, you're just like, oh, hey, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I saw him on the poster. I knew he was coming. It doesn't. I know we've said it. It doesn't feel though that way. Like when he shows up, you're like, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, what a like a half hour in maybe. And I look, and I'm like, oh, we're already an hour in. Okay. Yeah. And he's yeah. It does jump around because we go Montana, we go Wyoming, where where else do we go? Because then there's the the uh, the like the army fort kind of area is that the wyoming i think I that's think, wyoming. no that's not the wyoming because the wyoming is where wyoming's where costner's character that's shows right up right that's right because it's up in the mountains with all the aspens because the aspen trees are very brightly yep, yellow yep, yep that's right yeah they make sure that, I, I think they that when they colored this film they were like make these extra yellow because <laughs> they really like stood out it look i mean it does look really really beautiful though it's I the army fort was I want to say like 25 miles from where Horizon was in the San Pedro Valley. So well, it wasn't too far from where the Indians attacked because that's where right. some of those people. Well, that's like Horizon. That's that's what that's meant to be, right? Is Horizon, right? No, that's just the settlement down by the river. I thought that was Horizon. I don't think that was. I think I don't. Horizon's where we get to when at the end. When Giovanni Ravisi, Giovanni Ravisi shows up, and you're like, "Oh, hey, throw him in!" All of a sudden, but I think that's Horizon. It's like a bigger, almost city esque type of place. You know this this movie ends not to fast forward all the way to the ending, but it ends out of nowhere with like a five minute montage of a bunch of scenes, presumably yes. from part two, because they haven't shot the other two yet. So there's just a whole bunch of disconnected scenes where you're just like, it feels like you're watching part two and fast forward. This this is where <laughs> Yaney's comment of like, Lonesome Dove, I thought of that when this is ending. It's like, okay, this is with the re like clips from the rest of the miniseries. We're going to throw in more characters that you're going to see soon. And yeah, it was like five minutes. I'm like... The sad thing is, is, though, is the, the film doesn't lead into it at all. Like, it literally no. just goes no. from... It goes from the scene. I mean, we've got so much to talk about. And I know, I apologize. <laughs> I know this is all over the place. But well, this, I love of, the movie, but this movie is kind of all over the place because you have how many storylines? Yeah, that's There's that's at least kind of the experience five, of this movie. And I think maybe more. the only problems that I feel like this movie really, really has are in the in the writing department, I will say. Because there are things that happen. Like, you go from, for instance... Kevin Costner at one point takes a takes a hooker with him or a prostitute because she is the one that gets the kid from Jenna Malone's yes. character. She's she's watching the kid. Yeah, she's watching she's the kid, like the hooker babysitter, and and then her brothers, or the 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 dude that she shot in Montana, his brothers show up to exact their revenge and get the kid back and you know take her out, and so. They lure him, up, which was like the funniest, like weirdest scene. Like they go up because he's it, it's her new one, husband. Like she's married to a new guy, and there's one so of the sure. brothers is like a the hot head that just like yeah talks and yaps all the time, and he's he's walking with Costner, just yapping away. And the whole scene, I'm like, I just want Costner to pull his gun, and shoot this guy right now, just shoot him, just shoot him. What were bullets made of in the mid 1800s? Because why did five bullets from a revolver not keep this dude down in the chest? Even he should, and every time he shot him, I'm like just shoot him in the head. That's kind of a very <laughs> western thing too. I feel like though, like a lot of westerns, like it, sometimes you would have like the extra who would get shot, and they do like the the ragdoll physics falling off yeah. of a building or whatever. But other times you'd have somebody that gets shot like a whole bunch of times, but the plot requires them to stay alive for traumatic effect. Just yeah, for like a little bit longer. Yeah. That's kind of what this was to make it a little more, try to but make then, it a little more impactful. Anyway, they leave the town, him and the prostitute and the kid, they leave the town because whatever. And then they're just out in the wilderness. You get a couple different scenes of them out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then 
they're up in the wilderness. They're up above a railroad camp, I guess it is. And yeah. they're up it's there and she's Chinese immigrants in this yeah. kind of railroad area. Yeah. So she's complaining that she has to sleep outside because she's accustomed to finer things. And so he's like, okay, well, the next day I'm going to go into town and see whatever. Because they watch the brothers show up, look for them, and then leave. Mm -hmm. And then the next time we see them, they're established already in the railroad camp. So there's parts of this movie where it's like things are really drawn out and slowly paced. And there's so many characters to juggle. But then there's wholesale gaps in time straight up missing from this film like when they go down into town apparently they go down to town oh you, you want to work for the railroad or you want to come with us and get work that's perfectly fine come on like all that's just completely in the background you don't see any of it <laughs> yeah because it cuts to she's sleeping with some other guy and kevin costner's working now with the the railroad people it's five it's literally five minutes of screen time later i'm yeah. like what happened where did this come from <laughs> My goodness. And, and even, the... even the other characters, because in the um, military camp, you got Sam Worthington and Michael Rooker, who, Michael Rooker, how many accents did he have throughout the thing? <laughs> There's he a was lot of Irish really... for a bit. He was not Irish for a bit. There's a lot of like... really recognizable people, especially in the, in the, in the military scenes, because you've got... Uh, Danny Houston was in there. Yes. You've got, like you said, Sam Worthington was in there. You've got Michael Rooker and his 17 different accents in there. <laughs> it, it, it's not, not an exaggeration. I'm pretty sure every time that character appeared on screen, it was all supposed to be, I think, some version of Irish, but it never. I don't know. It was very heavy at some points, and then it it just kind of faded away in others. It just sounded like Michael Rooker in others. Yeah, yeah. I... Well, and then you have the other travelers where you had Owen Wilson, you had Will Patton, which they came long... in really late. Was that like two hours into this movie? Yeah. And they're like, oh, hey, we're going to bring you even more characters that are traveling across the country in this big wagon caravan. <laughs> Here's what I, I want to time out. Time, okay. time, we time got out. a time out on this. We thing. Time we, out. We are so all, all over, the, over place. the place with this. Just like the movie. Let me ask you this, and then I kind of want to dive into each of these sections as okay. with this thought, okay? Think about this movie, but compartmentalize it, give it a Tarantino-esque anthology or chaptered kind of format where okay. one chapter, part one, The Massacre at Horizon, and that's all that story, like the whole story, and then we go to part two, the girl who murdered the person from Montana and stole the baby, all that different stuff. Like imagine how much would, do you think anyway, it would have benefited this movie. Now, granted it wouldn't be able to be four parts or maybe it what, I don't know, I, whatever, but how much better would this movie have been if it would have just stayed with these characters, like stayed with one group all the way through whatever setup of whatever story we were going to get from them in this mm -hmm. movie before moving on to the next. Was it more confusing than it needed to be by jumping around so much to so many different characters? Or do you think that didn't hinder it as much? It did at first because I was like, I think when we went from that massacre to our next scene, I think it was in Wyoming there was a, a girl that looked very similar to Sienna Miller who just lost her husband, her son and everything else. And then we jumped to this new town and I'm like, is that, wait, is that supposed to be her? Or is that like the daughter, the, the, the hooker girl? I didn't know because of the way it cut, if it was like many years later and this is that girl now. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, it, it took me a minute they go oh wait 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 we're on a new story with new characters now <laughs> okay and then once i kind of figured that out i just kind of kind of went with it and then you know of course we cut back to them back and forth back and forth and then we throw more people and here's this what... movie probably <laughs> chapter one and chapter two probably should just been released as one big piece 
just yeah. because of the I'll way it... chapter two is also three hours long it is Jesus. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i can't eat like i mean here's i want i want to play a game real quick brad i'll play you don't have like imdb or anything like that up for this movie right i i do but they're in tabs i won't Okay, okay, don't look at don't look at anything. I want you to name five characters. Not the actor. I want you to name five characters' names in this movie. Go. Uh wait, no, two. No. We'll just do two. I can't. I don't remember any of their names. <laughs> this is kind of the problem with this with this movie is you don't really get to spend enough time with a lot of the characters to really become endeared to them. Like I love the short we got a short setup before the massacre sequence i really think that's horizon dude i really think that that's supposed to be horizon i think it is well i'm gonna we're gonna have to go but read never mind but anyway <laughs> you get like a short setup where you kind of very briefly meet like the brother like i thought they spent so much time focusing on the brother like the young brother like the, the young boy that i thought for sure that he was going to be a bigger part of this movie but he ends up dying in the in the shootout with his dad Right? Yeah, when, when he was like, I'm going to stay here with dad, and mom's like, no. Uh, yeah, He was kind of the main, like, he was kind of the focal character of the whole setup well, piece. You had a couple younger kids, because then they cut to the the Native Americans, and there was a, a younger boy, and mm -hmm. then kind of almost like the 20-something, his group is the one that did this, and you have yeah. the elders kind of scolding him, and he's just like... A hot head of like no kind of i'm gonna do what i want but then you had another younger kid talking to him. there were a lot of children kind of pop in because you even had the one kid who wanted those two guns and then there yeah, was the he was he survived the massacre too he he escapes yeah. the massacre because he's the one that goes to the army base and tells him about the massacre afterward and then he ends up going with some people who want to hunt native americans with Jeff Fahey and with his Jeff, that's why it's it's the twentieth anniversary of the premiere of Lost today. So because because Frank Lapidus is in this movie, it's an instant twenty out of ten. <laughs> as soon as he showed up, I was like, I'm glued. Like I'm gl I'm lightning glued to the screen. I love him so much. He's so good. I just love him. I adore him with every fiber of my being. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, you have so you have the one kid, Russell, I think is that kid's name. I think I was just scrolling around in the cast list and saw that. So he's the one that escapes to the army base and tells them about the massacre. And then he yeah, he ends up taken up with some random Native American hunters. And then you don't see I didn't even remember who that kid was by the time like no. they have him go off and then you don't see him again for 90 minutes. Well, I'm trying to think how many stories were there? Because you had you began with the surveyors. So that was just a quick story. It's over. But then you had another settlement come in that gets massacred. And then we go to. I think it all starts with that. That would be Sienna Miller's character. Like, I think yeah. that's all her story because that all. I, she's I the they main character through line through all that. Right. Her and the daughter. Yeah. And I think if they would have kept with that, because then you go, they go to the military camp. They're yeah. invested in that. And her and Sam Worthington eventually kind of have a thing that kind of gets not fully complete at the no. end of the movie. But I do think chapters would have helped it instead of jumping. Like if you would have taken that story, the massacre, they're at the 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 camp and kind of how they're integrated into it because you have the one older woman, I don't even know who she was. Uh, was it Michael Rooker's wife when she was? Oh, I don't have any idea who that woman room. was. His, it, she's like was his mother. All the people in the... I think it was supposed to be his mother. Okay. And she's hitting Maybe. those guys with the, with the umbrella. And... <laughs> and they're like stealing her furniture. I'm like, like what is happening? Like, and th This is literally two plus hours into this movie and they're still <laughs> introducing new characters. I'm like, yes. please... For the love of God, if you look at this movie as just a three-hour act one, then I think it probably works better in that sense, right? Well, and how many new characters got introduced to us in the five-minute montage trailer? 
Oh, I didn't even pay attention. I, like, I saw Giovanni Rabisi show up, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> there were so many other people in there, too, that it's like, oh, what? Who's that? Who's this? What's going on? Oh, I, now I want chapter two, damn it. I and think then it's over. <laughs> the, the thing that really, I think, disappoints me is, well, apparently there were, so there apparently there were people on the wagon train. I forgot about this, too. There are people on the wagon train who were also named Kittredge, because that's sienna miller's character's surname so they're apparently related to her somehow were those the two english no that th those were two completely different again two completely brand new characters that i guess were in the movie because they wanted you to see breasts i guess i don't really know why else those two characters were in the movie i, I guess we'll see in part two because they were like that they introduce these two characters. They're in the wagon train. Luke Wilson goes and yells at the guy and is like, because he, because the guy's like not helping or not doing anything when they're all like, this is yeah, like, he's, he's like an artist. Yeah. They're, he's this just is, drawing pictures. This is Oregon trail days when like you had to have everybody pitching in and everybody yeah. work hard to, to help. They, they were going the horizon. They're on the oh, yeah, Will, horizon. Will Patton and his. He's the, Kittredge. He's, 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 Kittredge. he's related to, to all them. But yeah, so then he yells at the English guy and is like, no, 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 you got to do this. And then there's a scene of like two rando dudes who are part of the wagon train who are creeping on the English dude's wife while she's outside bathing herself in drinking water. Well, it, it seen before that one of those guys was like the main guy that like helped them from helped him fix the axle of the, wagon, the right? axle. So right. Yeah. Another person didn't get crushed and And now they're like two creepers outside the camp. Like, yeah, and then Luke what? Wilson goes to yell at him, and then they like stand up to him and are just like, "Oh, real? Like, like what? Like, are they going to keep harassing this yeah. English, this random English?" Well, they're family? like, "You're you're Luke Wilson. What really? What are you going to do?" <laughs> I if hope Owen was oh, here. I hope Owen shows up yeah. in chapter two. <laughs> if Owen was here, we'd be <laughs> we'd be concerned maybe that this was going to happen. So yeah, we have we have like that whole massacre sequence. We have the whole aftermath of the massacre sequence where and this is this is the best part of the movie for me. I want to dial into this just a little bit. And this is what I was really hoping that this movie was going to do more of because it plays with both perspectives here. You get yes. the massacre from the Native Americans who come in and they slaughter everybody in the settlement because you've got the young kind of hothead who doesn't want any white eyes is what they call, yeah. uh, you know, pe like white people coming in to settle in their area. He doesn't want Pionsene was the character's name. All like these are all Native American actors and they did all the scenes like in Native American language and everything like that. And I love that there's that conflict between he and his father, who's like the elder of their people and like is like, no, all you're going to do is like you're just going to embolden them. More of them will come. And then yeah. like, they're just going to be hostile toward us because you're being like this person. You're being a dick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I mean, if we know the United States history with native Americans, I mean, we get it. Like we definitely get where, where that hostility comes from, but there's a good back and forth sequence where they go from, you have the massacre happen. And then there's the aftermath of the massacre for, all the settlers that like the, the survived like Sienna Miller's character, then you go to the Native Americans and then back and forth. Like the first hour almost of the movie is just those plots kind of concurrently mm -hmm. with the Native Americans introducing other Native American characters, like the other person and his wife who had had a baby and then she decides to follow him because they wanted to go off and join the younger, the son. Yeah, because they they left. They're like, fine, we're gonna. Yeah, like the Native Americans split into two camps. Like half of them who want to stay and follow the village. All the, all that stuff was so good, and I was really. You don't see. I don't think you see that Pionsene guy again in this whole no. movie. He's like the main antagonist of like. He's like the chief person who organized and executed that. Because even the raid. the the convoy that comes through the Native Americans that were up watching them up on the hill. I don't think it was part of his. No, they're different. They were completely different. different. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like you don't see anything else. And the other kind of crappy thing is, is they don't really go back to any other scenes from their perspective either. No, they just kind of dip into it. And then they, Oh, yeah, we're like, going to go back to whatever story was next. Yeah. So I liked that. I thought that that was the best part of this. And this was the first hour 
pretty much, I mean, aside from the few disconnected scenes at the beginning of the movie, the first hour of this movie is all focused on this massacre that happens and then the mm-hmm. aftermath of it between both groups of people, like the survivors of the American settlement end up at the army camp or end up with the people from the army and all the like kind of different, sort- but then this thing takes a straight nosedive off of the hill when Costner show, like, I really hate to say it this way, but it's when Costner shows up because he's the first it- new character like he's the first new plot that gets introduced yes and that's an hour in that's an hour into the movie and it's like a whole new plot is here all of a sudden (laughs) now i i know you mentioned chapters do you think if there was like a cut of you know we we just spend an hour with this massacre the native americans this camp and everything else and then it would have just cut and been like not even chapter two, but part two. It's, the because I think he's supposed to be else. a cattle trader or a cattle salesman or cattle. They they call him something in the movie, and I can't remember what specific title they gave him. It was but like they made something... it seem like he's he's a little more than what he leads on that he is, especially when he go, when he shoots the that kid that's going after um the baby. Yeah. See, I, that's what I think. I really think it would have done because if, if, if say you just, after you cut, you just stay with Costner and the prostitute and all the character, if you're going to introduce a new plot, fine, but then it starts going back to Sienna Miller's plot and like all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, wait, what, what happened? And then when the wagon train came, when Luke Wilson shows up, it's like all bets are <laughs> off at that point. It's like, oh my God, how many more plots are we going to throw into this thing? And then, like I said, you have... Russell, the kid, he escapes and tells the military about the, the slaughter at the fir- at the first place, and then he shows up two hours into the movie at a trading post where he wants these guns, and then Frank Lapita shows up, and, and th- th- I loved that scene though. Like that scene was like a really tense kind of standoff of like what were they supposed to be playing? Were they supposed to just have like a a a showdown or like a shootout or I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know what the point of that scene was necessarily. I mean, aside from to intimidate the, the native American who was there to try to trade, obviously, but I, I think that was just to, there was the intimidation and to show the, I don't want to say racial tension, but just this, how some people are just very much like, we'll kill him we don't care whereas you know the the one guy just walks up to that native american is like just don't move don't do anything and he'll quit just just stop yeah it was a pretty tense scene you're just like you're like hoping the kid didn't shoot the kid was like and then you have the other the native american kid just like trying to to come in and you're like ah I did like that scene though. I like that scene quite a bit, and I love Jeff Bacon. I loved that scene, and then I, I loved the whole I loved the whole follow up of that scene where they're going to go to a Native American camp. Now I, I think it's the same. Is it meant to be the same group of people that we see the the same Piancene and all the people that followed him out of that camp? Is it meant to be? Because I don't think it is. Because you don't I see don't any of those same characters. Think so. I think it's another group <laughs> that they just attack. Costner, what? I think we're going to have to go back and rewatch this and take better notes. I think what it is, is I think we need part. <laughs> I think we need part two to come out. Like I said, this is the whole, the, the, the biggest, biggest problem I think with this movie. And as, as much as, like I said, I don't, I, I like all the performances well enough. I don't think that uh, most of the performances I don't think are like batting a thousand. I don't think there's anybody here that's like blow me away, like incredible or anything. Well, nobody was awful in but there, i don't think anybody was really bad either it no. shot really really well like there the is... costumes the sets all the locations and everything like that it's all so beautifully i will, I will tell done. you whose whose backstory i want i think i think his character's name is bill when no. we get to kevin costner and him and they come out and yell at him and he's sitting on the bench like asleep and he's like what bill who's bill 
It's just some old dude that they yell at that he just like perks up on this. Is that bench. in the is that in the end part? Is that in the five minutes? No, it's right in the middle, right when Kevin Costner first shows up. I <sighs> the way I wrote it in my notes, I because I laughed so hard just because the look on his face is like he was on set for that one day. He's like, I have one part. I got this one part. I gotta nail it. I gotta nail this. If I would have tried to take notes during this movie, it would have taken me like 10 hours to watch it. Because every time you look up from taking notes, it'd be like, wait a minute, who's this completely new person that I've Where never seen before? I only took a few notes. Michael Rooker's accent, Bill on the bench. <laughs> I don't think I don't think this is a bad movie. And I don't think, obviously, we haven't seen what comes next, right? And given how dismally this yeah. performed, I think they're plan was dump it on streaming see if we can recoup some of the budget Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna they saw they still have part two kind of can but what they want to do i think is they want to kind of drum up more interest in part two before they put it back on a theatrical schedule which honestly after watching this this whole thing should have just been done as a mini series because you should have just had all these little stories in short little pieces just to watch. Imagine, yeah, imagine if you watched this, but the first episode, the first hour was just the Massacre at Horizon and all the follow-up from that. Episode two is when you first meet Costner's character, Mm -hmm. and then episode three is when Sienna Miller's character finally comes back, and the plot lines start to intermingle just a little bit more. Like either either way, like mini series wise, or like I said, if you take if you take a Tarantino kind of approach to this, give it give it chapters within or give it parts within. Oh man, I yeah, because the only real title cards that pop up is to let you know that oh now you're in Wyoming, yeah, oh now you're over here, but then when it cuts back and forth between them, you you're just supposed to know, or you need to have a character that's a thread that's a through line between some of the plots yeah. right i think like, that probably could have helped yeah like maybe somebody from the massacre goes back to wyoming and then maybe they run into kevin see i don't because i don't understand but I, I, I we probably won't find out till the beginning of part four how kevin costner's character is even somehow tied into the idea of well no 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 we do because at the end of this the prostitute finally seduces Kevin Costner. She's trying to get in Costner's pants literally the whole movie, which he wrote, he wrote and directed the movie. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he played hard to get as long as he could, but damn it, he, he just couldn't say no to her breasts heaving out of that corset anymore. <laughs> so fi- <laughs> finally, he gives in to her and then... She leaves him a Dear John letter, but I think that was funny because I remembered back when she when she leaves him that letter, I remembered back to when we first met him. He's dictating a letter to someone to send yeah, a telegram he because read. he can't read. So I just thought it was so funny that she left him a letter he couldn't read. <laughs> <laughs> and then she it, dumps the kid off on a Chinese immigrant. <laughs> yes. I I think because these this Horizon flyers kept showing up even because she wrote the note on Horizon that the note was and on those the back Chinese of Horizon immigrants flyer, yeah. looked at the back and were like oh and I think eventually it's there all these characters are going to come together in this all of them are going to end town. up in Horizon like back in that one yeah. place and <laughs> they'll are all you... eventually get there are you. Now I know I I know my answer, but I want I want to hear from you. Just like your excitement level for a part two plus in the because there's supposed to be a three and a four as well. Your yes. excitement level for this, like like where are you at? Honestly, I'm I'm kind of excited to see part two because I did even though it does jump around and the way everything kind of weaves together, it confused me a little at first. But once I got oh okay, this is what's going on it hooked me in that's three hours flew by and i after that five minute montage i'm like i do want to see what all this is about i'm kind of excited to see part two whenever we get it we'll see after part two if that excitement is still there to be like all right fine give me part three 
Yeah, I mean, how much more can you possibly set stuff up before you have to start paying off some <laughs> something of the plots here? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I do like the development because you have Russell, who the the young boy who is the one that first warns the military about the about the massacre. He wants those guns. They have that tent standoff at the at the thing, and then they go to that Native American camp. And the kid's, like, really horrified by the fact that they're basically waiting until all the hunters, all the strong, all the men, everybody strong leaves. Mm -hmm. And then they go in and massacre all the old people and women yeah. and children. Like, that was, in terms of scenes, like, I think even if 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 I was the middle of this movie there's so many characters getting introduced once the wagon train shows up and everything like that and you're just like well i'm so lost now i don't know what but then once they dial it back to that and they give you that kind of raw emotionality of how kind of horrifying that sequence is and how like how bad that sequence is it kind mm -hmm. of it kind of what's the best way to say this because that's where it ends too like that's the sequence it ends on before we go into the five minute montage of whatever like i i was really really excited at, at the end of this movie after that sequence i'm just like okay wow this is gonna be like business is about to pick up whenever whenever we finally do get part two so i'm right there with you i think i'm just as excited my five is very tentative because once all this stuff is set up, like once they get into mm -hmm. paying some of this stuff off and start building more of this tension, I see my score for this movie probably increasing. And I'm surprised it didn't end because we started off uh, Angus McFadden, who played the, like, I guess he was like a priest or a father or something because he, he was some religious person that came across the first Surveyor's Massacre and kind of made the the grace and we don't see him i'm surprised he didn't show up at the end as like this bookend of like oh i come across another one <laughs> just just another day in the in the wild west <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right we literally don't see that character ever again do we no i don't think we do and i i like him as an actor i think he's a great actor like there are so many actors that just pop up even <laughs> even small like character actors like oh i know that guy from something and and then they just they just come and go man I are, even... are there any characters do you think like do you think we'll see the hooker character again or oh, we do have you think to. her or do you think her plot is is done because no, she, she's like no. dropped off the boy she wrote a letter to old costner and then you don't know, think that she's just gone no, we have we have to because it's still it, is that her sister is the one that shot the dude in the cabin in Montana at the beginning. Is it her sister or did she just live with them? I think she just lived with them and just took care of the kid. But I mean, even still, like that story is unresolved because we know that now they're going to be looking for Costner's character because he iced the other brother. He iced another one of them. And then we we can't have seen the last of her like we can't have like. And obviously, Kittredge, their family name is big because Sienna Miller's got her story. Owen, or not Owen Wilson, uh, Will Patton, mm -hmm. and all the girls, all the daughters that he has. They obviously, he, there's something big there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see what chapter two brings me. Maybe it'll tie a lot of these loose ends that the first one left us up a little maybe not resolve it's part completely. two it's part 204 i'm gonna i'm gonna take a stab in the dark to say it's not gonna tie them all <laughs> it's up it's not buddy. gonna tie them all up maybe a couple will i don't know maybe a couple characters will get this has been the most i'm trying to think back in my entire history of doing podcast film reviews i can't think of a film review <laughs> that's been more disjointed i'll say than than this one has but that's the nature of this film if you've seen this film if you're one of the four people and first of all thank you for <laughs> tuning in to probably the only podcast that covered this too but if you're one of, if you're one of the people that did see this movie then you know what we're talking about because 
it's just there's so much going on in this movie but let me ask you this i want to i'm kind of curious about this too whose character are you most interested to see kind of their further Mm. exploits like where do they go from here what more do we get to see from those characters you know kevin costner obviously i I liked his character but you know he 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 was a co-writer and director of course he's going to kind of make him more of the standout i wonder if he's going to show back up yeah i i don't know maybe maybe uh who else I don't know. I gotta Sam say, Worth- Sam Worthington, Sienna Miller. I mean, their story—you kind of see where it's probably going since they 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 finally kind of came together at, at yeah. the end. Yeah, that I character that man a- to see kind of what more happens with you know Owen Wilson and all that crew. Yeah, the English girl bathing topless in the drinking water. <laughs> just even if even yeah. if for no other reason than to give Wayne Aruzu something to watch when they watch this movie. <laughs> In the Native Americans, you know, I want to I want to go back to the the hot head kid and his crew that ran off and, you know, are they going to come back around? Is there going to be some big something with them? And I'm sure I'm I'm looking through the cast list of chapter 2 to see what oh my goodness, what I some new know. one <laughs> tell me for the again. love of god tell me there aren't a whole slew of new characters in there <laughs> it's a pretty long list of uh people in this film i mean you know for a fact there's going to be a ton of new characters because even in that five minute montage which i again i can't express this enough it literally just comes out of nowhere like all of a sudden all these disconnected scenes start playing without yeah. sound effects with just this the score playing and it took me probably until about two minutes in to be like oh this is a montage of what's coming up next well, and it then literally it first, doesn't stop at all. It just goes straight into it. I was like, is this a montage of what's coming? Or they're trying to show some advancements for some of these characters so we can pick up even further down the road and when chapter two comes. I'd have taken a five minute montage just reminding me of all the stuff that happened <laughs> in this movie at the end. <laughs> it should have been remember this character? Remember this character? Oh yeah. Which I can't believe this cost me. This came out in theaters when? August? August. Was it? Uh, Beginning of August? Maybe end of July? Maybe July. Yeah. I I paid $6 American for this, Brad. I paid $6 for it. To rent it. I watched it on Max. Well, yeah, because you have, because you had to, (laughs) yeah. So you paid with that with with your Max. I rented it from Prime and it was only $6. Like it wasn't even a full price rental and it came out like two months ago. <laughs> I know. Are we ever going to see part three and part five? That's what I want to know from you. Are we ever going to see part part two? We know is done. Eventually part... they'll do something with it. Yeah. Part two is done. It has been shown. It, I think it just screened like two weeks ago. Yeah, they screened it at can, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the word from it hasn't been completely kind. <laughs> for it so we'll no see. because everyone who saw it can everyone who saw part two at can was desperately trying to remember any of the characters names <laughs> from part one that's that's why they were trying to be like wait uh, hold wait, on what was that what who's that person again i wonder if it had a a five minute montage at the end of it to try to set up part three but it's all just pictures of storyboards because I haven't yeah. shot anything yet. Or it's just Kevin Costner sitting in front of a flipping through script pages, like sitting in front of a fireplace in a cowboy hat. Or I don't know. I, I don't know. I know. I think they're getting ready to start chapter three. It's supposed to, I think, I think start maybe, filming next year. Maybe just because this is such a passion project for Costner, he's sinking a lot of money himself into it that maybe this is just a maybe. story that he wants to see committed to film so much that he'll yeah he'll plow ahead with he it just thinking i think here's what i think well no i i want to i want to i want to reserve that i want to pitch it back to you you're the guest <laughs> do you think that people should check this out what well, i yeah. mean i know you rated it a seven but sell your recommendation to other people who maybe aren't into westerns aren't into anthology mm series um... if you're not into westerns it's gonna be a tough tough sell because it is very low burn western it feels very western doesn't it yeah yeah Yeah. 
And I think that's part of really the appeal too that just worked because it just, I like that type. Like the Unforgiven is such a, I mean, doesn't compare to this movie. Unforgiven is far superior to this film, but it's just that slow pace. I like the slow pace, but it hooks you in to where you're like, oh, we're we're done already. That is just like a Western thing, though. You think about it, because in in Unforgiven, it's who is it? Is Richard Harris's character? who just randomly all of a sudden shows up and like it's a whole block of screen time dedicated to him. Yeah. And you're like, who the hell is this before Gene Hackman <laughs> finally shows up and you're like, Oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> like, So where's, here's my, where's the Gene Hackman of horizon and American saga to finally show up and be like, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, uh but uh. <laughs> in chapter four. Oh, he's in chapter four. Okay. He's in chapter four. <laughs> Imagine, is this a backdoor prequel to Unforgiven? Are they going to DH Gene Hackman and CGI no. him in there somehow? As, as Nerdrovert said over on our Discord, this is a, a backdoor prequel to Open Range with Kevin Costner. See, I haven't seen that, so I can't, I can't, I can't speak to... Is it a backdoor prequel to Feel the Dreams? Is this movie somehow going to end with Costner's character in Iowa somewhere planting fields of corn and being like... Boy, I hope no one ever mows parts he's, of this down. He's the original. He he plants that original field of corn. <laughs> That's so how it's going to end. This is the mid 1800s. There was corn there way before that. But selling this, like I said, if if you're not into westerns, I don't think I can sell this to you because it is it's paced that way. It 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 yeah. just goes that way. If you're kind of been teetering of like, should I check it out? Should I not? I say yes just because it is. It, I don't want to say it's a good story because it does kind of go all over the place. It's good stories. It's a tiny good starts of stories. Yeah, it's it's a sliver of a few different stories altogether. You yeah. don't get a full complete character arc or com- complete closure on any of the plots no. that this film introduces. So I think if you wait until chapter two to where you can see both, hopefully it will kind of give you a little more of the arc. You know, what's going to, you know, what's going to make me mad, Brad part two is going to come out and you and I that we're doing this again. When part two oh, comes out, yeah. we have to, yes, we have now. to now we have to now, but we're both going to see part two and we're going to be like, Holy shit. That was great. Now give us more. And then they're not ever going to make them. And that's then- what's going to happen. We're going to get so invested. We're going to get so wrapped up in this. We're going to rewatch part one right into part two, six hour <laughs> Western marathon. And we're both going to be salivating. Like, please, for the love of God, give us more Kevin Costner in a cowboy hat. And they're going to be like, no, no, no. We couldn't find the funding to do three. So it's not going to happen. And we'll be like, son of a bitch. Can they bring, can they bring Costner back as Papa Kent again, just to, can he be the pot can't in the DCU so that way we can he can keep getting more paychecks that he can then parlay into making the next one of these? Yeah. I mean he needs maybe he needs to commit back to Yellowstone <laughs> so that he can keep getting the paycheck so he can pay to I'm make surprised, this. honestly, because knowing how popular that show was, I'm surprised that this didn't I don't know how this is doing on streaming though. Like this could be uh, yeah, gangbusters on streaming. For all I know, from people that love this kind of thing that were just like, yeah, I don't want to go see it in theaters. I'll wait for it to hit streaming. I, but knowing how popular that show is, I'm surprised that this didn't show out a little bit. But maybe it's just because they just didn't market it very well. I'm surprised Azoff and uh, Warner Brothers didn't just shelve it and decide to <laughs> put it right next to Batgirl. Put, it back, put it next to Batgirl on the shelf. Be like, <laughs> this was at least this. See, nobody's seen Batgirl and nobody ever will because they called it unreleasable. That was so bad. Yeah. I don't think this is bad. I think there's so much good here. I think if you're a mm-hmm. fan of Westerns, I think if you love this type of genre film, I think you, I think you've got to be in it. for the slow burn. I think you're going to really enjoy it, but I think you're going to kind of be like me. Like I said, I feel like my rating for this after I see part two plus, I feel like my rating for this is only going to increase. Like as a standalone film, I it does not hold up as a film yeah, unto itself. I can see that. And my rating was just my enjoyment for the western enjoyment for oh he got this and i loved a lot of the stories but yeah it it definitely left me like 
Oh. Was there a weak plot in this? I don't think any of the plots was particularly weak. No, I was into every story. I think that's why the three hours goes by so quickly because you do get into each story even if it does jump back and forth yeah you do feel you are committed to them you are wanting more yeah and then you get that montage at the end you're like oh (laughs) it's like you get the o face like "Uh oh Uh that's all i get Uh oh Uh -oh. (laughs) except it's the dude with the the bald dude with the mutton chops who was watching the english girl take a bath in the drinking water yeah yeah Oh, <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, that's our recommendation from the peas. Check it out. I mean, it, I think this is definitely worth this episode out. is just like the movie. It's it weaves all over the place. Yeah. And we got to the to the five minute montage here in the end. Do you want to bring in another character just real quick before we wrap we, up? Just one more might character need to. to introduce. <laughs> we might need before. to. Good Lord. All of a sudden, there's Gerald Morris's character right over there. Yes. <laughs> I'm nice Shyamalan's here too, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my goodness. So please check it out. I mean, if, if it's something that you're into at all, if this is anything that kind of plays anything to any of your wheelhouses, like I said, that three hour runtime does fly by. It's not a super yeah. intimidating runtime. You'd think it might be, especially with a Western, but man, I, I really was invested in everything that was happening in the film. Five from me, seven from old man Brad. Brad, what do you do these days, man? Tell people where they can find you. Tell people what you're up to out there. Out on the blah, 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 blah. Besides being a Broncos fan, congrats to your Broncos. They won today. They did win today. Congrats to your Giants. They won too. They, the, the Giants. We're both, they we're tried both to winners snatch. today, Nick. We're both the Giants, winners today. The Giants desperately tried in the second <laughs> half to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Very but desperately, on. but yeah, some on. the I don't think the Browns were able to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, <laughs> is what it was. The Browns just weren't good enough to overcome how bad the Giants flipped the script. And just Daniel Jones had like what 95% completion percentage in the first half. It's like, what's even happening here? But then I don't even know. Tell them where they can find you, buddy. Well, just uh, just just search for old man Brad. I'm out there. I do a horror podcast, I talk to filmmakers, I review movies. And I watch a lot of stuff on Tubi. So if you follow me on social media at Tubi Tuesday, every Tuesday gets wild. We watch a ton of stuff. Well, I do anyways. Not everybody. I want to say everybody, but (laughs) I want to. Here's a question I have for you, Brad. Yeah. The audience needs to know. I need to know when is the Amityville Death Toilet series review coming to a two piece near you. We need to figure that out. That's gonna be that's gonna be one heck of a series when we get to it. <laughs> this is I will a say <laughs> Tubi has a Western coming out. It's it came limited to theaters. It's called The Thicket with um Brad Hargis. <laughs> no, it's your it's your me. starring vehicle. <laughs> it's my starring vehicle. <laughs> it's with Hold please. Uh Peter Dinklage and Juliet Lewis. Oh, okay. Okay. It looked it looks interesting. I'm sure it'll drop on to be sometime here in the future, but maybe I'll get you to come on my show and we'll talk a western from Tubi. There we go. That sounds terrifying. That sounds like a dangerous <laughs> precedent. I don't know if I want to set that kind of precedent. You know, but you're one of my favorite people in podcasting. Genuinely, uh like one of the people I love, I love sharing a microphone with. We still we still have to torment Gerald with a Rebel Moon director's cut full review. I still have never watched any of it. I've so, I've only seen the two, the regular. I haven't watched the director's. We got to punish Gerald. Gerald, I think he, I think he logged it on Letterbox that he quit watching part one he after did. like a half an hour or something he like did. that. <laughs> so I want to make Gerald watch all of the like the R rated or the unrated director's cut, whatever it is. It's like six six hours. Oh my non western. Please, for the love of God, can we can we subject Gerald to that? That Speaking hat of magnificent seven. <laughs> Gerald, speaking of speaking of dad, dad will be back next week. If you're missing the big G, we all miss the big G. We love you, Dad. It was so great to have him back last week, even though we had to basically duct tape the kids like real quick for an hour to make sure they didn't run around or cause any chaos. But it was super great to have him back, and he will be back next week finally. 
as we stretch on into the fall season. And I wanted to save Beetlejuice Beetlejuice for him because I know he's a really, really big fan of the original. He was really, really looking forward to seeing it. I have seen parts of the original once, maybe, probably in a gym somewhere. Never actually really paid much attention to any of that kind of not. You'd think with how much I love Batman 89, too, I would have, this would have been a shoe in for me to check out. Especially, but. you know, co host you had on a previous show. He's kind of a big fan of one of those actors. Yeah. You'd you think, you think it would have been something that I would have checked out <laughs> at some point, but just go ahead and oh. uh, just uh, cut in a sound clip of Yaney saying Nick hasn't ever seen any movies. Just, uh, just, I was hoping you guys would do the 2024 The Crow on his return. I'm bummed. I mean, it, 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 well, that's probably already on streaming, too. Isn't it? it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, the big G, ladies and gentlemen, Gerald will return next week for some Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice action. And then I believe week after that or maybe two weeks after that, we've got Joker 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> which I've not seen great reviews for. So I'm in, I really hated the first Joker. So it was fine. It was Phoenix's performance was good, but yeah. listen, I don't need a film to just tell me how shitty everything is. Like, exactly. You know, like, I mean, it's, it's Todd Phillips being like, Oh boy, doesn't it, isn't everything so shitty guys? Yeah. Like, I yeah. can turn on the news and find, like yeah todd phillips like try to do something positive in the world instead of trying to make the joker uh like an anti-hero like, like the joker of all people like try to i'm come on yeah none of that none of that vibed with me really as much as i love gaga i'm not looking forward to joker part two so i guess we'll see what happens with that maybe the musical aspect of it will be something that'll kind of hook that's me in, that's but. the part i'm i'm curious about yeah. is the musical aspect of it i don't know but ladies and gentlemen please check out brad check out old man brad check out Tubi tuesday on social media watch something on Tubi and tell brad about it he will literally become your best friend and uh you know you know i love you i i literally will take any excuse i i possibly can to to share the microphone with you thank you so much for being here thank you so much for recommending this i never probably would have watched this without this recommendation without you saying hey let's do this on the show so i'm grateful for that grateful for you and you know i love you baby yeah thank you for having me i know i was supposed to be here last week but i uh you know things just work out see that was my fault though because uh, gerald apparently wanted to watch this movie that he got a screener for and then he's like oh i'm gonna send it to brad yep and it expired <laughs> I still haven't. So I, I still haven't it seen it either. Through. So I'm just like Gerald. Gerald wants you to watch it, and then I'm like, oh, so he must want me and Brad to do that movie. So I just called that shot at the end of that episode without even planning it. So that's as much that's on okay. me as as it, was, as it is on you. You just it was kind of like the uh, the cliffhanger. People were just waiting, <laughs> and I came I came in with a western. Kevin Costner and I came in and saved the day. <laughs> 